Welcome to The Charnel House Trilogy. This is a series of three short horror adventure games made by Owl Cave Studios, the same people behind Richard and Alice. If you recognize the second game in the list here, Sepulchre, that's because Sepulchre was actually a standalone release that came out a while ago, and I believe the Charnel House trilogy actually builds upon the universe created in Sepulchre and builds it out to a kind of full experience with these three mini stories that I believe are set in the same universe. If you'd like to play this game for yourself, you can grab it from a bunch of different places, and I'll have links to all of that in the description. Let's begin with Inhale. So, it's another good evening to you, my fellow cheated hearts of New York City. Good news, the blizzard's finally stopped. But the weatherman says there's a rainstorm coming. Just what we need, some good old-fashioned New York rain. So close your windows, lock your doors, wrap up warm and settle in for another evening with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively here on BC 304 FM. I'll be taking you all through the night and right up to the graveyard shift, because who ever heard of employment laws, huh? So to kick things off with a personal favorite of mine, here's Forever by Nervous, Nervous Test Pilot. Pilot. It stopped snowing days ago. I ran out of excuses not to go and see him. I don't want to think about this. Okay, it's going to be really hard for me not to want to just constantly call out people's names for people that were involved in the development of this game, because it's got a pretty impressive list of people that were involved in it. So many cool voice actors and um, artists, like for example, I believe some or maybe even all of the art was done by Ben Chandler, who is freaking awesome at doing art. Uh, the voice in the beginning of the person on the radio, that was Kara Ellison. Like, oh, there's so many cool people involved in this game. But I'm going to try not to constantly call them out because I, I suppose it will probably ruin the, the immersion into the horror storyline. Not sure how afraid I can be when I'm going, oh, look, that voice actor, I know them. So, I'll try to cut down on that. But I might squee randomly. Pot plant. My adorable little pot plant. Gavin used to call him Dave. I called him Gilbert. Gilbert it is. Gilbert? Dave? Dave Gilbert? I, I think that's a reference. Gavin's old coat. It's been here since... Since... Well, the night he left, I guess. My birthday. Classy guy. I do wish he'd come and pick the damn thing up, though. He left on her birthday? Oh my god, that's mean. Also, this music is really groovy. This is nice. My trusty portable radio. These days, it gets a lot of use. I'd prefer to leave it on. I like the ambiance. Me too. Books, games, a couple of CDs. Very me. And an asthma inhaler. For some reason. No idea who left it here. Might have been Sophia. Hope she has another. Although since she hasn't been here for over a month, I guess she does. Playing a game would be perfect about now. If only I could concentrate. My DVD collection. I'm not a huge movie buff. Gavin was is, though. I think a few of these are his. I should probably give them back soon. Ah, how I love examining people's homes and adventure games. Really is my favorite thing. Wait, that's a phone? But it looks like a crow. It's a novelty phone. Gavin got it for me. It looks like a crow. There are messages on the answering machine. Do you talk into its beak? I was beak? walking through Washington Square Park the other day when I saw a woman having a long animated conversation with herself, apparently. Nobody else around, but she was really going at it, arguing with air almost. She was a redhead like me too, a bit older though, and you know what I realized? That's me, that is, when I eventually get fired from the station and end up missing talking to you guys so much that I just go full throttle talking to myself instead. So to the anonymous woman talking to herself in Washington Square Park, I salute you. You gave one insecure DJ some hope for the future. <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't feel like calling anyone, but I suppose I should listen to the messages. You have two new messages. First new message received today at 1.18 p.m. Congratulations. You have won tickets to the Krennic on Thames Museum's latest exhibit. Straight from the catacombs of Augur Peak, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to... Tickets to an English museum? This is New York, kids. Not interested. Message deleted. Second new message received today at 6.29 p.m. Hi, Alex. The nurse just told me you'd been in. Should've let me know. I'd have made sure I was here. It's been a while. I'm sure your dad appreciates it, love. You know he'd tell you that himself if he could. Call me on my cell when you get this. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. End of final message. I didn't call, Mom, because I knew you would be there, and I couldn't do it if you were. I don't know why. Please don't hate me. Ah, screw it. I'll call her in the morning, right? Right. Of course. God damn it. Talking to myself. My therapist says it's my desire for an audience, for company. I say it's because I constantly feel like I'm being watched. Well, I can't imagine why that would be. There's nobody here. Nobody controlling your every movement. If I was drinking coffee or felt like reading, then maybe. But I don't, so no. My mom gave me this when I moved here. Gavin had to fix one of the legs a few months ago. Oh god, never mind. It houses a bunch of old games magazines, last Tuesday's copy of the paper, and an ashtray. What a life. Games magazines? Does anybody actually still read those? There's something behind the radiator. Maybe I can reach it. Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. A DVD of Strangers on a Train. I bought this for Gavin. Ugh. Back behind the radiator it goes. Why was, <laughs> why was there a parcel behind the radiator in the first place? Do you normally put stuff on things that get very hot and may cause fires? A surprisingly beautiful view of the city. One of my favorite things about this apartment. It's dark out. The snow might have stopped, but it's still utterly freezing. I'll pass, thanks. Oh, I get to use a computer within a computer. This is cool. Just my scribblings. Can barely even read it. Nah, I'm sure it's here for a reason. A mouse. I really want a gaming one. Gavin always used to go on about the joy of basic no-frills hardware. First thing tomorrow, I'm ordering a gaming mouse. Hell yeah! The E key sticks, and there's a cigarette burn on page up, <laughs> but I can't bring myself to part with it. I don't know why, really. A memento. Gavin won this for me in one of those claw machines. No idea how he did it. Some kind of wizardry. Some games magazine. Every review score is seven or above. <laughs> of course. I'm worried. I'm actually kind of worried that this game might be too referential for me to find scary. There's so many references in it already, and I know there's going to be more. It's going to be hard. I might just be laughing all the time rather than scared. An unremarkable desktop lamp. There's something stuck up by the light bulb. I might be able to fish it out. What? What? Why? What? What? Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. Wait, wait, huh? A ten-foot extendable ladder okay. with stand okay, and Okay, okay, okay. I'll just put it back. All right. <laughs> Thank God. I was worried there for a second. I should turn the PC on first. That might be a good idea. Power on. Good idea. Five minutes later? What? You really do need a new PC. Did you scribble out Gavin's face? Nope. Not changing it. 
let me have this one childish act of rebellion. That's creepy. A photo of Gavin with his face scribbled out. Hey, a, a girl's entitled to the occasional petty, vindictive outburst, okay? It's a photo of me, with my friends Sophia, Isaiah, and Carly. And that asshole's there, too. It was taken on my birthday a few months ago. Wait, didn't you say that he left on your birthday? So this picture was from the night that he left? Right, let's do this. Oh look, drama as my favorite reviewer gives a game a low score. Whatever, I've always loved his writing. Very personable, makes me feel like I know the guy. Oh well, no time for that now. Gotta track my package. It has to be here today. Of course, I had to change all my regular passwords. Gavin knew them. God damn it, what did I use here? I think I wrote it down somewhere when I was drunk. Oh, yeah. That would be this? Ah, here it is, I think. The writer walks the shores where love inscribed its final kiss. Time to read, Alex. I've got to use that and figure out what book it's referring to, I guess. Or can I just use it directly on it? Use the password? No, there's no password there. Okay. The kitchen. I'm not actually a bad cook. I just usually can't be bothered. I'm pretty hungry, but I'll grab dinner in a bit. Got things to do first. Let's do this then. Whoops, I, whoop, I didn't actually mean to do that. I wanna keep looking around before I do that. But sure, I could use a shower. Okay then. Yeah, it looks like that is actually everything that's in here. So let's take a look at this. Let's do this then. Alright, what did it say? First kiss something? The writer walks the shores where love inscribed its final kiss. Final kiss. Time to read, Alex. Love inscribed its final kiss. What does that mean? Sophia's inhaler. Might as well bin this. Tomorrow. Now, let's not get sidetracked with minor things like asthma. Louis Cassell's The Charnel House Burial. My prized first edition copy. The one memento from Gavin I'll never get rid of. Charnel House. Oh, Cassell. You were a strange and troubled man. I wonder whatever happened to you. For your graduation. I hope there will always be room in your spectacular mind for me. You are my island. Love you forever and always, Gavin. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Cassell famously became a hermit while writing this book. The island he moved to was called Augur Peak. I remember now. Augur Peak 1318. Wait, that was actually the one? I just picked it up because it sounded interesting. I resent having to pay special delivery for train tickets, but I need them today. The next train is in for two weeks. I can't wait that long. What? The site says it was delivered and signed for. I don't recognize that signature, and even I would have remembered signing for it today. It looks like it says Benwood or something? What? Well, great. Fucking perfect. I need those tickets. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe they'll still come. Maybe the website's fucked. It's too late to call them now. What else can I do but wait? Now it's storming. This is gonna be fun, making my way to the station by midnight. I'm not being sarcastic. I just want the tickets to get here. Guess I'd better find a way to spend my evening then. I don't feel like playing a game, so maybe a DVD is in order. Might make a change. Looking outside, it seems like the storms hit a little early, New York. Rain, thunder, lightning, the works. 
So batten down those hatches and get ready for a cozy musical night in with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively on BC 304 FM. I really don't want those train tickets to come, because I know Sepulchre was based, what was set on a train, and I don't want her to be on that train. Hmm, it can't be locked. It doesn't even have a keyhole. Uh, it must be jammed. I think I can jimmy it open with something, if I can find something that'll fit. Hmm, so something thin, perhaps? Well, a post-it note sure isn't going to work. Anything in the buckets? I don't really want... Anything in the bathroom? There's nothing useful in there. Kitchen? Unfortunately, Gavin took all the cutlery with him, so I'm having to make do with brittle plastic crap. It won't be any use. The more I think about that, the more it pisses me off. Who takes the fucking forks when they go? Seriously. That is weird. Can I read the other books? Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. The only time I've wanted to slap and hug the main character at once. Good book. As shown in Horowitz's 2003 essay, This is the Wrong Book, this is the wrong book. Okay, so I can't read the ones that don't actually pertain to the password. I'm still curious what they are, though. Death, The High Cost of Living, just one of my many Neil Gaiman books. All the onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girls in the world can't kill my love of the endless. Also, who am I kidding? I was totally an onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girl. Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Ugh. A beautiful novel by an author whose beliefs I totally agree with. Just kidding. Rand was a fucking troll. I only bought this thing because of Bioshock. <laughs> That's probably how most people actually know of it from... They probably know of it from Bioshock. Leaving Megalopolis by Gail Simone. I bought this because I loved her run on Secret Six, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. And I say to them, guys, you get the same pay packet as me. Do you think I can afford a vacation? I think they're just trying to get rid of me. I'm joking, of course, to all the wonderful people at BC304. You're my family now. Wow, what a chilling thought. 50 Great Coastal Walks of the British Isles, Volume 2. I checked this out of the library years ago, then forgot to return it. Don't ask me why. I've never even been to Britain. Hopefully the librarian's forgotten. Sanctum by Madeline Rue. This just came out. I have an especially strong connection to her writing. I can't wait to read it. In fact, everyone should. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the voice actor for Alex is actually that person who wrote the book. The Mirror by Graham Masterson. I remember this being pretty terrifying when I was a teenager. I wonder if it'd hold up. Okay, back to my quest to find something to shove in there and pry it open with. I'm not calling her or anyone else. Not tonight. I'm not reaching back there again. If I was drinking cough, but I Anything in the sofa? Ah, the sofa. So many happy memories of sitting here, doing fuck all. I have nothing but love for this sofa. Wait, no, the other thing. Apathy. It's a sofa. Actually, it's a bed, too. Sure, yeah, I'll go to bed at seven in the evening. That'd be suitably pathetic. Alright, there's gotta be something on the desk, I guess. You know what? I think this little guy's tail would fit in the gap. <laughs> this idea is so stupid that it might just work. Oh god, you know what I just realized? I just realized I really want to identify every single icon, every single pixelated icon on the taskbar. That one's Firefox. That one's Skype. I feel like I know that one, but I'm not quite sure. Mmm... That's obviously the Windows icon. That's a folder icon. It, anyway, let's pull myself away from this. Here 
here goes. It fits perfectly. Aw, oh, shit. The tail's just snapped off. Well, this was one of my better ideas, wasn't it? Fuck's sake. Oh. There you go. Cracked dog model. Do I have any glue? I'm not closing it again after all that. Right, let's see what we have here. A photo of me and Gavin. It's broken. I put it here out of the way. And here are the DVDs. Don't really care what I watch. I'll just stick some crappy horror on. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was Rob, my neighbor from the apartment down the hall. He has my package. The delivery man signed it and left it with him. He's bringing it over now. I'm just... Shit. I'm doing this. I have to get ready. Shit. Yes. <laughs> what now, Rob? Forgotten where I live? Hello? Yes, this is Alex Davenport speaking. I... Thank you. I can't breathe. I can't fucking breathe. I think I need the inhaler. What's that call? Hey Alex! Jesus, how bad is this storm? Oh, hey, are you alright? I'm fine. Thanks. Fine. I just had a bit of bad news. I'll, I'll be fine. Sorry, Rob. Ah, oh, God. Gavin again? Nah, nothing to do with him this time. <laughs> Sorry. It'll be alright. I... I just need to sort some stuff out. Bad times. You know how it is. Hey, look, thanks for bringing this over. You sure? No, yeah, seriously, I'll be fine. Thanks, Robert. You only call me Robert when you're not okay, Al. I know you like your own company, but seriously, you know where I am if you need me. Yeah, I do. And honestly, Honestly, tomorrow you're going to have me sniveling on your doorstep, begging you to listen, but right now I just need... I just need... No, it's okay, Al. Take all the time you want. Wait, I won't be here tomorrow. Sorry, Rob, I'll call you. Please don't worry about me. I don't want to think about anything right now. Days are endless. I need to get ready to leave. There's always tomorrow. I'll call Mom tomorrow, too. Outside, the city begins to withdraw. A siren sounds in the night. Blue light reflecting on brickwork as tireless paramedics rush to the scene of another trauma. On the pavement below, a woman hurries home, casting furtive glances over her shoulder as she pulls her coat tight around herself, the rain beating patterns on the fabric. A car drives past, music disturbing the peace. The woman looks at the man in the car. He turns the music down, calls something out as he passes. 
I see the woman start to walk faster. She flinches at the thunder. The car drives off. Another set of sirens now. Somewhere in the distance, the city is drowning. This is where we live. This is our world. Ebb and flow, endless, forever. It's the perfect time for loneliness. The perfect time to indulge the selfish, petulant monologues of the dispossessed. But sometimes it's just like this, you know? Sometimes we can't help it. Sometimes we don't want to go out and hang out with your friends. Sometimes we don't want to talk. Sometimes we just want to wallow. You don't know me. You never fucking knew me. Go fuck yourself, you judgmental, self-righteous prick. Cat, I'll see you soon. Looks like the storm didn't reach here. The snow is still falling. It's a clean, crisp night. Just past midnight. The train should be here any moment. She's got to be really, really cold. She has a short-sleeved shirt on. And it's snowing. An intellectual-looking guy. His jacket has elbow patches. Cool. A pile of luggage, including mine. I just dumped it there because it seemed like the right thing to do. A pile. Just gone midnight. Feels like I've been here forever. This place is lonely and forlorn. Took an expensive cab ride to get here. We're in the middle of nowhere. The station looks like it hasn't been used in years. A forest. The trees are bare in the winter months. I've never been here before. I should explore when I'm back from Augur Peak. I used to love walking in the forest with Mom and... Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll go walking in the forest when I'm back. Although I imagine there are plenty of forests on Augur Peak to explore. Train tracks. They don't look very well maintained. I can't see the train. I hope it shows up soon, I'm freezing. Oh, I've got a bunch of stuff. I've still got the cracked dog model on me. I guess it's just inner pocket? Ticket, purse, lighter, cigarettes, book. The charnel house book? The charnel house burial? I don't remember bringing this. I'd like to say smoking is my only vice, but it's not. My trusty lighter, 10 years old and still going strong. Cards, money, mace, the usual. My train tickets. My cracked little doggy. That'll probably save my life one day. So, hey, you been waiting long? I, uh... I'm not sure. I lost track of the time. Tell me about it. I nearly slept through tonight. There's a clock over there, though. It hasn't moved since I got here. Oh. Great. So, uh, where are you headed? A little port town. <laughs> Last stop. <laughs> me too. I'm not staying there, though. Catching the ferry to Auger, Auger Peak, Peak Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's not a common destination, is it? What brings you to the island, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> it's dumb. You'll laugh. Hmm. I'm headed there to dig around in the dirt and check out broken pots. Trust me, I won't laugh. Okay, fine. It's a bit of a personal pilgrimage. Ah. I won't pry any further, but you know the funny thing? What's that? It feels that way to me, too.
train should be here soon. I think I can see it. It's going to be a long, boring journey. Fool that I am, I forgot to bring any recreational reading material. All I have to pour over are some historical texts. Thrilling. Hmm. Trust me, it won't be a boring ride. Would you like something to read? I guess... I guess I should let go of it. I won't need it after tomorrow. Just one final reminder of Gavin I can do without. Hey. Hey. You can take this. I've already read it. Pulp horror fiction? Yeah... Sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> Mine too. This one's great. You ever heard of Cassell? I can't say I have. Oh, well, he... Looks like this is us. Two passengers. Well, this is my lucky day. It's freezing out here. You guys got on board old Gloria now. She's nice and warm. I'll come on and show you to your cabins momentarily. I'll just grab your luggage. Off you go now. Well, well. What's this then? Who's a cute little doggy? <laughs> I know just who'll like this. Settle down, you. We're nearly ready. And if you start causing a scene now, I'll have to tell young Floyd what you've been up to. And we both know what'll happen then. That's it. There's a good boy. You just be a good wee writer and wait, watch, and listen like you always do. It'll be over soon and you'll be back home before you know it. Aye, I reckon so. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Nothing weird going on there, no. Just something in a bag and a crow. He likes eating crows or something. And he can talk with them. I, I don't even know. That was really, really damn good though. What a creepy ending. Alright, well I think the horror is just starting. I'm curious if when I move on to Sepulchre, which I believe is the chapter that's actually set on the train itself, I wonder if it's going to be the, like the exact same thing as the original Sepulchre, or if it's going to be changed, or if it's been built upon or enhanced in any way. I don't know. Even if it is exactly the same as what I saw before, I still want to play through it again, because it's probably going to make a lot more sense, now that I know kind of some of the events happening around it. So. We'll have to see. Anyway, I think I will end this episode here, since ending at the end of one of these chapters seems like a pretty good idea. Nice natural ending point. And I feel like each chapter should probably be played in its entirety in one episode. So I'm really enjoying this so far. I hope you are as well, and I will be back soon.